Out of all the tools and panels and brushes and filters inside of Lightroom, there is one feature that I consistently hear is completely overlooked or just seldom used for various different reasons. And these reasons usually range from things like not being completely comfortable with exactly how to apply this, or not being completely comfortable with the benefits of using this, or not being aware that this even exists. And I was in the same exact boat. The first couple years I used Lightroom, I didn't really understand exactly what this could do for my landscape photos, and I never heard anyone talking about it, so I just completely dismissed it. But one thing is for certain, I now believe this might be the single most underrated and underappreciated tool inside all of Lightroom. And that's really the purpose of this week's video, is to discuss how you can take your landscape photos to the next level and improve your photographs using split toning. Now, if you're not familiar with what split toning is, it's basically the process of toning the highlights of your photograph a specific color and toning the shadows of your photograph a specific color. Now you might ask yourself, you know, why on earth would I ever want to do that? That's a very valid question. And in this video, I have a few examples to show you exactly the problem that split toning can solve. But before we jump right into it, I have a, a real quick demonstration. I want to show you that I think is a, a great way or a great kind of illustration of exactly what split toning does. Now this is your standard kind of black to white gradient map with on the, the far left right here is uh, pure black. This is kind of your shadow region right through here. This is your darker midtones. You have your midtones through here, lighter midtones, highlights, and then whites right through here. So it's exactly like a histogram. And if we come over here to split toning and drop this down, and if you'd actually, if you don't see split toning right here, if you just right click there and hit customize develop panel, you just wanna make sure that you have split toning checked right here. And if you ever notice that there's a section that you don't use ever, you can actually deselect it and you can move these around too just to completely customize it as well. But uh, you just really just wanna make sure that you have split toning checked right there and just hit save. And then come over here and drop split toning down. And it's broken down into highlights and the shadows. And let's just pick a, a quick color for highlights. Let's just pick uh, this color right there. Let's pick a color for the shadows, it's blue. Let's turn the saturation on both all the way up just so you can really see what's happening. And you can clearly see the areas that Lightroom is determining is highlights here because it toned it in this kind of orange color. And then you can easily see the areas that Lightroom is identifying as shadows because we tone it in this blue color right here. And if you take this balance slider and you slide it to the left and right, if you slide it all the way to the left or negative 100, that's basically you telling Lightroom that you want Lightroom to provide 100% of emphasis on shadows. And then if you slide it all the way to the right, you, you're telling Lightroom that you want it to provide more emphasis on the highlights. I shouldn't have said 100% emphasis, it's just emphasis, more emphasis on shadows this way and more emphasis on highlights that way. The default is always zero. And I usually leave it somewhere between negative 20 and plus 20, or a lot of times just right at zero. But this is just a great depiction of exactly what is happening when you split tone a photograph. And you can pick any color that you actually want. Now, for a real life scenario, the problem that I encounter all the time is that you get on location, and this happens to me a lot for sunrise and sunset shoots, and to say the sun is rising, Beautiful sunrise, lots of color in the sky, beautiful light, you're super excited, you're firing off exposure after exposure after exposure and you can't wait to get home. You load them on your computer and you're looking at the photographs and it just doesn't look exactly the same way as it did with your eye. It doesn't look as colorful, it doesn't look as explosive as it did before. And split toning is a great way to kind of add that pop or that oomph back into your, to your actual photograph. So here is a, uh, a fully edited image minus the split toning. And I really do like this photograph, but the, it, it just, it, it's lacking something. This sunrise was much more powerful and much more colorful and much more warm when I was actually on location. It just didn't accurately come through on the, on the photograph. And by split toning the highlights a specific color is a great way to kind of add that back in. So if we come over here to the highlights section, and if we hold down the option key on a Mac and you start to drag this hue slider to the left and to the right, you're basically telling Lightroom that whatever hue I land on to use 100% saturation on that color. And you would never do that in real life, but this is just a great way to help you to try and find a specific color that you want to go for. And then once you land on something, you can just let go. That's not usually the way that I do it. I usually will come up here to this little uh, color palette area 
and just take my dropper and just kind of move it around until I find a color that I think accurately suits the photograph. And I will typically look for a color that's already naturally occurring in that scene. And sometimes I will um, overemphasize that color just a little bit more to kind of add that pop back in. So if we come over here and all the colors up here at the top are gonna to be more saturated than the colors down at the bottom. So if you look at this little slider right here at the bottom, the S stands for saturation. If you drag this all the way up to the top, you'll see that you're at 100% saturation. So everything up at the very, very top is 100% saturation. And then as you come down, these colors down here are much less saturated. So if we pick a, a warmer color, this is a color right here that uh, Lightroom has as default. These are kind of Lightroom's uh, default color samples. I really like that color right there in the middle. And I'm gonna turn the saturation up of that color in the highlights just a little bit so it's easier to see at home. And you might be looking at this right now and you really don't see a whole lot. It doesn't look like there's a real big difference. But when you toggle this effect on and off or if you toggle the, um, the split toning that we applied on and off, that's when you can really see the difference. So this is split toning on and this is when it's off, on and off. And if we zoom into a specific area, you can really see it even more. This is on, I'm sorry, that's on, and this is off, on, off. And if you look all through here in the clouds, you can really just see that the, the lights kind of turn on. This is off and this is on, off and on. And I think that's just a fantastic way to just kind of add that warmth back to those highlights and add a little bit of color back to those as well. Now, this next image right here, this is a great example of another problem that split toning can solve. And I think this is very common, especially when you're photographing a scene that's got a large dynamic range to it. So you've got a bright area of your scene and you've got darker areas of your scene. And what happens a lot of time, especially if it's sunrise or sunset, those brighter areas, they just look a little bit different. They looked a little bit washed out. They don't look as warm as they did before. And in the shadows, those shadows look really cold. They look very blue. And when you're on location, a lot of times those shadows, they don't look quite that blue. They don't look quite that cold. And those highlights look much warmer. This is where split toning can solve that problem for you and kind of make the scene resemble what you ac accurately saw with your eyes when you were actually on location. So for this image of uh, Bridal Veil Falls in uh, the Yosemite Valley, you'll notice this dark area of shadow right through here and just how blue it is and how cold it looks through there. And I do not remember it looking quite like that with my eyes. And the, the sun coming through here, it was just peeking above uh, El Capitan over here and coming through here. And this, these kind of rays of light were so much more warm when I saw them on location. It just didn't accurately come through in this photograph. So there's two things we can do for this image. If we wanna fix these shadows and we don't want these shadows to look so blue, we don't want the shadows to, to contrast so much against the highlights, we can come over here to shadows and we can pick a specific color for those shadows as well. So we can hold down the option key again and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we can hold down the option key here and just start to drag this around until we find a color for those shadows that we accurately like or that we like. Or we can come up here and we can pick a color that we want to go with. And once again, I, I really like this color right here. And if we pick that, and let's kind of just turn the saturation up just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And if we toggle this on and off, pay close attention to this shadow region right through here. So this is off and on. Off and on. And you can really see how it warmed up all of the shadow area here. And it also warmed up a lot of this area right through here as well, because Lightroom isn't only gonna identify the areas of the deepest shadow. It's gonna identify anything that's, that's gradual shadow, which was a great example in that very first illustration where we used that gradient map. You can see where the shadows kind of blend into the highlights and Lightroom will apply a little bit less of that color, whatever color you pick in that transition zone. So although this area right through here isn't deep shadows, it still received a lot of that color that we picked right here. And I'll toggle it on and off again. So this is off and on, off and on. Now we can do the same exact thing to the highlights. So let's reduce the saturation here, basically turning off the shadow effect. Let's come up here to highlights and pick a warmer color and close that down. Now, if we look at the highlights, off, and on. It really brought in a lot of the highlights to the photograph 
but where it did not apply that, that color is down here. You'll notice that the, the uh, shadow area right through here is still that same kind of deep blue color. And if you pay attention to the shadows, this is off and this is on, off and on. Lightroom didn't really apply any of it in this situation to that shadow area, only the highlight area. So those are kind of multiple different ways you can play with it in this type of an issue. So whenever you have those kind of highlights that don't really show the, the warm color like you saw with your naked eye when you're on location, split toning is a great way to reintroduce that. And whenever you have those shadow areas, this is so common, that look very, you know, it's in deep shadow and it looks very cold and it looks very blue and it looks a little bit unnatural. If you tint those shadows a warmer color, that's a great way to remove that blue tint. Now the final, or I guess the third, yeah, third and final problem that I encounter with my images that I, that I find split toning is a great thing, great way to solve is whenever you have a, a kind of a, a white balance issue, but you don't want to adjust the white balance from the normal way. You don't want to adjust the temperature. You don't want to adjust the tint. This is a great way. Split toning is a great way to do just that. So here is uh, one of my favorite images from one of my favorite cities uh, of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it's it looks very cool. And I love the, uh, the sunset this evening. Once again, the sunset was absolutely incredible. I was running around like a maniac. Just I, I don't know how many images I took in this scene, but I would, it faded so fast and I would, it was just rapid fire trying to capture as many photographs as I possibly could. I get it back in post and it just looked a little bit bland. It looked a little bit muted. And split toning is, going to be, is a great way to kind of reintroduce some of that, uh, that pop in the actual color in the sky. So if we come over here to highlights again, Let's actually pick a color this time. So maybe something up there and I'm definitely going to exaggerate a little bit. So it's easier to see at home, turn this on and off. That's off. And this is on and you can really see what it's doing to the color in the sky. That's off. And this is on. And if we turn the highlights off and we come down here to the shadows, I mean, and, and this is one of the biggest issues I had with this photograph is how kind of unnatural these shadows looked or came through in the actual photograph, they did not look like that in, uh, in real life when I was there. So if I wanna remove kind of that blue tint or that blue color cast to a lot of these shadows, I'm gonna come over here to shadows and just pick a, a little bit warmer color. Maybe that right there, kind of warm it up just a little bit to about there looks good. And if you pay attention to the mountains, this is on and this is off, on and off and back on again. And you can see how it completely removed that blue color cast from a lot of those shadows. And we can go back to the highlights as well. Let's add a little bit of warmth to those highlights and let's toggle the entire section on and off. So this is with no split toning at all, not to the highlights, not to the shadows. And this is with split toning to the highlights and shadows. So this is without, and this is with. So you can really see how we went from this kind of cool color balance, cool color temperature, and we really kind of warmed it up by introducing a more kind of realistic, pleasing color to those shadows, add a little bit more pop to the actual color in the sky as well. So those are really kind of the, the three problems that I encounter a lot with my landscape photos from just kind of bland images from uh, the sunrise or sunset that don't kind of accurately portray what I saw with my naked eye. Split toning is a great way to add a little bit of that, that, that pop back to those colors. Split toning is also a fantastic way to correct highlights or shadows in your photograph that don't accurately resemble what you saw on location. And it's another fantastic way to just kind of correct uh, color temperature or color balance of an overall photograph as well. So I do hope you're able to get some helpful information out of this week's video that you can apply to your landscape photos moving forward. Uh, split toning is a fantastic tool to get super creative with as well. You can tone your highlights and shadows literally any color you want. And I love going back to some older images and just kind of playing with them a little bit and just see if I can just add a little bit of, a, uh, I don't know, reinvigorate them somewhat. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And I really do appreciate you watching this week's video. And if you did enjoy it, if you could give it that thumbs up, helps me out, helps the channel and the video out as well. And subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you all next week. Bye.